Alright, welcome. This is going to be a custom game against the bad guy, aka Sakoon, or Nukes spelled backwards, aka Assassin Hit, who is currently the 132nd ranked Platinum Allied player. Looks like this season he's only been playing Allies for ranked and hasn't done any Axis games. But it's always good to play against a Platinum player, always something to learn, so with that, let's get right into the gameplay. All right, Germany, round number one. So Russia went ahead and bought four infantry and two tanks. And then he did the 9-12 attacks on West Russia and Ukraine. He lost four infantry in West Russia, which is below average. And then he had a pretty terrible Ukraine. Not a complete disaster because he killed all of the German units. Uh, a complete disaster is when Germany has units left here and Russia has nothing. Um, he actually committed himself to the attack and lost his fighters, which is pretty bad. Um, but was able to kill everything that I had in Ukraine. So um, I'm going to play super, super aggressive with Germany uh, just because uh, my feeling is I want to kill Russia as soon as possible because I don't want to give him any time. So I just went ahead and bought six tanks and an infantry. And then we are going to be super aggressive with Russia. So we're going to take one guy to take Karelia. And then we're going to take a tank and take the Caucasus. We are going to use our battleship to kill this destroyer. We're going to send everything and their mother at C zone 7. And I think that's it for all the combat. <clears throat> I do. I think that is it for all the combat. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take the Caucasus and we're going to stack Karelia and we're going to stack Ukraine. And he has no air power left, and we're going to see what he does with this. Uh, I Undoubtedly, he'll have to take Karelia back, I would think. Uh, but he may not. He may opt to take Ukraine. I don't know, because I've never played him before that I can remember. Uh, at least not a one-on-one -on -one game. I think we did play him. I think I have played him in a tournament. Um, and then the idea behind the battleship hitting this is that um, if he wants to kill the battleship using a fighter here and a fighter here, maybe the cruiser. Um, then he can't do a C-Zone 37, right? C-Zone 37, uh, to me, is pretty good for England. So if he doesn't do C-Zone, I'm, I'm in, fully anticipating he's going to do C-Zone 37 um, and try to do a KJF. Seems to be the, the norm now, and a lot of Platinum players are using it. It's a great, great success. So that's my anticipation. I'm just going to have to figure out how to press as hard as possible and take uh, knock out Moscow. So I think that's all I want to do. All right. Okay, combat was really good. Um, well, needless to say, all we did was attack C Zone 7, but we have uh, a cruiser and a sub left, <clears throat> which is good. So we are going to, in this instance, all right, we're going to stack Ukraine. So we're going to take all of our infantry. Our tank. Uh, let's see. These two tanks. We're going to grab a tank and an infantry. 
can go there. We're going to land our fighter there. Our fighter there. Our German fighter there. We're going to take... Uh, these two guys and go there. We're going to grab these two guys and drop them there. I'm going to move this guy in there. Oh, let's see here. These guys are going to move forward. This guy is going to go to Libya. Or Algeria, sorry. And then... Alright. Our two tanks are going to go to Poland. Poland. Do I want to put another tank here or put it up in Karelia? Hmm. Let's put it in in Ukraine. We'll send these guys up there. We'll send these guys to Finland. How about Finland? Or we could send them to France. No, we'll send them to Finland. We'll move these guys forward. Our AA gun will go to Poland. And this AA gun will move up to Germany. And then... Are we going to back out of everything? Hmm. Yeah, we'll back out of everything. Let's move that over. Move this up. Uh, yeah. All right. Man, I'm wondering if I should put the tank there. I don't think so. I'm not going to do it. All right. I hate doing tank blitzes, but... Um... I think it's probably a good idea. At this point, I think it's probably a good idea. Just given our... our um, position right now. So I'm interested to see how he responds to this. But again, it's the first time I've uh, played them um, on one-on-one, -on -one, so I'm going to see if he does C-Zone 37, which I think he'll probably do. You never know, though. So anyway, that is going to conclude Germany round number one, and I will see you guys back for Japan round number one. All right, Japan round number one. So United Kingdom... Bought two destroyers and aircraft carrier, which he mobilized to C-Zone 35. He then executed a 37 attack, which was very successful. He uh, didn't lose any. He lost like one unit. Um, so that was pretty tremendous. Uh, and then he used a bomber and the infantry from Persia to kill my tank that was in the Caucasus. That I miscalculated. I probably should have put an extra unit in there to prevent this from happening. Now he's probably going to use his fighter to take my transport out. But if he does that, he's going to have to move some of the Russians down to the Caucasus. I would think. Which should allow me to take uh, Stack West Russia. I think. Not 100% sure, but I think I'll be able to do that. So I anticipate he's going to stack the Caucasus next turn. 
but we'll see. I am going to have to deal with this because I don't want to get hemmed in between the UK. This is definitely going to go KJF. And so he's going full blast at Japan. I have to hold this off and try to get into Moscow as soon as possible. So in order for me to do this... Wow, I can only hit 37. <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's see, I can hit 37. I think I can hit it with this fight. Oh, I can't. <clears throat> wow, one destroyer. That's it, huh? And then I'm going to stack 36 with everything else. Okay, so let's stack Burma. Let's stack Burma. Go there and there. And this fighter will attack there. And then these guys will go from the Philippines. Stack Burma. We'll take the tank and an infantry. Go to 36 and stack Burma. We'll move. Let's do two of those, two of those, this fighter, actually we're going to have to do three, and the fighter, we can bombard that. Uh, what else here? Alrighty. I guess it doesn't matter if he, uh... Okay, man, this is going to be a rough battle. This is going to be a rough battle. I'm going to lose fighters for sure, because nothing else can get there. I have to do it, though. All right. I'm just wondering if I sacrifice Quang Tung and just go full full speed on this. So I can land my fighter in Thailand. Or on the aircraft carrier, maybe. No, I don't I only got one move. So K Tung. Hmm. Alright, that's fine. Alright, let's run this. And that is rough. Let's do it anyway. God, no fucking hits.
Well, now I can't kill the sub. Alright, put one fighter in C-Zone 36. Put the aircraft carrier there. Put the destroyer there. Put the battleship there. And that fighter can't go there. I guess we'll put it in Thailand. And we'll move this guy down here. And we'll move our sub to 47. Oh, this is so bad. So bad. I think I'm going to lose my fleet. Well, as bad as his Russia 1 was, my Japan 1 was just as bad. Oh, that's so bad. Okay, that was horrible. All right, that is going to be it for Japan round number one. And I will see you guys back for Germany round two. All right, Germany round number two. So, obviously this game... Um, this is pretty disastrous for Japan. This is probably going to be dead. USA decided not to take the transport out and instead use the fighter to take Kuang Tung. Uh, killed my guys there. And I think I had a fighter there. Let me look at that. Uh, two infantry and a fighter. Wait a minute here, where's my combat here? No, I didn't have the fighter there. I must have landed it. Yeah, that's right. I landed it in Thailand. All right. So, and unbelievably, one infantry attacked one infantry and one. And attacking one beat a defending two with no hit back. I messaged, uh, <laughs> I messaged um, the bad guy to see uh, how many rounds of combat I took, but I, I haven't heard back yet. And then he stacked the Caucasus, which we thought he was going to do, right? We talked about that. So I ran the numbers here, and he took France, which I wasn't really expecting, but it's not, not entirely shocking. I, um, I ran the numbers here, and I think we're just going to go for broke. The battle for Caucasus is a 60% battle for Germany. 41 to conquer it, and 38 for the defender to survive. But if, but if this is successful... Rush is all but done. Um, and so, obviously, if I'm going to at least stay in this game, i got to kill Russia as soon as possible. So, we're going to take this battle. Obviously, it could go disastrous. Um, if, it, if it goes disastrous, then the game will be over uh, either way. Uh, let's see here. 50-50 battle. Now, he might have a one fighter and a tank left. Hmm. All right, anyway, we're going to take the battle anyway. Um, either way, this could be the deciding battle, and it's early, uh, only round two. So I went ahead and bought, though, two tanks for Karelia, because it's in no danger. Uh, two artilleries and nine infantry that I'm going to spread out between Italy and... <clears throat> and actually, we got to watch this. So because, anyway... He took Morocco, but that's not his goal to take Morocco. He's going to set up a... Uh, he can hammer 
Italy with it or something else. So don't be fooled by this that he's just dropping guys off to go and march across Africa. No, he's got enough guys here, and I don't have any defense. So he could um, hit Italy. So we may just back out of Italy and then hit it if he decides to drop guys there. So anyway, let's take, and we're going to take these six guys and take West Russia. And then let's run this battle. Let's run eight infantry. We'll run these eight tanks. We'll run, we'll take our transport. We'll grab this tank. In fact, we'll grab the infantry out of Italy. Go back to 16, drop it there. We'll take the battleship and bombard. And we will take the other two fighters and attack. And so that is... All right, what am I missing here? Nine infantry. Nine tanks. 14, that's only f 18, 19, 24. Why does it say only 21 are attacking? Take away one. I should still have... All right, these three fighters haven't attacked. All right. That was almost a mistake of epic proportions right there. All right, so there it is. 24 against this. Oh yeah, and then we'll take one tank and we'll take our three guys from Germany and we will uh, attack France. All righty. All right, let's run it and see how atrocious or epic it is. Unlikely in the Caucasus, but it is 60%. That's all right, let's do it anyway. Wow! All right, so combat was mixed. Uh, we <laughs> we killed all of his units, but uh, we failed to take the territory. So, uh, as good as that is. All right, let's put. Well, hold on a second here. How many do I need to put? Let me... Oh, they all have three. Okay. So I can send them back to Germany if I want. I don't know if I want to send them back to Germany. No, I don't think I do. Let's send them to there. We'll move these guys up. We'll move this guy up. Take our five tanks and put them into there. Move our AA gun up into Germany. And then we'll move this guy forward. Okay, I am just concerned about where I put the fighters. If I put them here, I will have seven tanks with which to hit Russia. <clears throat> or I could stack the Caucasus, which, ah. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting now. 
And I'm going to have, what, 10 guys in Germany and no fighters? He'll have one fighter, one infantry, one artillery, and a cruiser. Ah, uh, two fighters. No, actually one fighter. It's going to Russia anyway. So, man, should I have sacked a plane and kept a tank? And taken it? Maybe I should have taken it. I don't know. I didn't think of that. I probably should have taken it. Sacked a plane. But then I would have lost two planes now. No. I got two more tanks coming back. Uh, he can mobilize there, which he's got a lot of money. He's got uh, 27, so you can buy nine guys with Russia. So he's got a lot of money. All right. And anyway, with my fighters here, maybe I could put him. Maybe I should put him in Ukraine. Then I could kill the transports if he decides to take Italy. And five tanks, he's got what, one guy? Oh, I have three guys, seven tanks. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put him in Ukraine. All right. I think this is safe. Alrighty, let's mobilize. Alright, we put our two tanks in Karelia. Uh, two artillery and eight guys there and one infantry into Italy. Alright. <laughs> as atrocious as this was, um... I don't know. We're playing against a really good player, so I don't know how it's going to pan out. Japan is on its last legs. So we'll see what happens. If I can fend off the dual, the dual threat here and take, uh, take Russia within the next couple turns, I just not, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to do it. Let's see. This fighter. I can't get any fighters to the Caucasus, but it doesn't matter because I didn't take it. So anyway, we'll have to see what happens next. That is a rather long Germany round number two, and I will see you guys back for Japan round number two. All right, Japan round number two. So, United Kingdom, they bought four infantry, two transports, a destroyer, and an artillery. So they're loading up here in the Atlantic, uh, except for three of the infantry went into India, and then they attacked uh, C zone 36, but had an, a dreadful uh, dice result and uh, lost seven units to m my two units, uh, which is which is pretty insane. But on the flip side, his USA Navy is gigantic already in the Pacific. Um. And it's gonna, I'm just going to spend the rest of my whole life buying ships to try to counteract this Navy, which is going to suck. So I made a decision. I did the math on India, and it's a 66% chance that we take India. 63 to conquer, 66 to win the battle. So we're going to take this battle. If we take it and win, um, then I can just concentrate on buying boats and keeping India alive and maybe sending planes to Philippines, but just keeping my Japan alive. Uh, if it fails, it it's pretty bad for me, but I can regroup in, uh, in C-Zone 60. Or at least I should be able to repel. I gotta buy ships though, and bottom line is he can outspend me. So it's not a great situation for Japan. All I did was buy a destroyer, two subs, a fighter, and an infantry. Uh, so that kind of sucked. But 
let's see if we can do it here. So let's go here. Wait a minute. We're going to attack this, attack this, attack this. Attack this. We are going to take one transport from there. Pick up the two guys. Go to 35, draw them in India, take the battleship, bombard India. I'm going to take the other transport, pick up this guy, go to 35, drop in India, take the cruiser, bombard India. And I think that's it. 13 against 11. It's not great, but according to the math, it's 66% to win. And I think just the way things are going, if I try the knockout, it might work. So I'm going to take one guy here. And I'm going to do the two-on-one there, and then we'll take four guys and attack uh, Manchuria. And let's see here. I do not want to do that. Really nothing else for Japan to do. Uh, it's pretty brutal. But it could have been a lot worse. I mean, he, he had a much better odds to sink my entire fleet, which would have pretty much ended the game, I think. Um, in this case, worst-case scenario... Uh, let's see. 50-50 battle. I do only have a, a fighter, a tank, and an artillery left. Um, you know, if he gets a 4% result or a 5% result and has a couple infantry left, I mean, that's okay. But I won't be able to do a follow-up attack on India. So this is it's all or nothing on this turn. So let's do it. Let's move our aircraft carrier here and our fighter there. We'll move our submarine. I will move it there. Actually, no, let's move our submarine here. And then we'll move our destroyers. Oh, wait a minute here. What's he got? Four fighters? I'll have three destroyers and an aircraft carrier and a fighter. That might not be a bad. And he wants to attack it with four fighters? I don't think he's going to want to do that. All right. We're going to change our mind. We're going to move our sub here. And we're actually going to mobilize to C-Zone 60. I wasn't going to, but I think I am now. Although... No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to block them. Alright, so we are going to do this here. We're going to mobilize to 62. <clears throat> and we're going to block him from taking the Philippines this turn. So we actually got a better than average result here. We got a 32% result, uh, which is really good. Better than average. Our, our average would have been uh, one fighter, one tank, one artillery left, and we had a fighter, a tank, and two artilleries left. So that's pretty good. And an infantry, sorry. All right, so I think that's it for the non-com. All right, our fighter is going to 62. 
Our submarines are going to 60. Our destroyer will go to 62. And our infantry will go to Japan. All right, I'm not sure if this was the right move to uh, to take India now, but I guess India now rather than later. I don't think he can take it back. Um, he can maybe attack with one one infantry and a fighter. I don't think that's winning. In fact, he can't even attack with the infantry because he can't uh, get through my ships here. So um, we can hold India. Which is nice. And then we're just going to spend the rest of our time just building ships and planes and trying to defend our three victory cities here until uh, Germany can capture uh, Russia. Which we haven't done the math on it yet. I think I'm not, I'm not close to getting it yet. I think I need a couple more turns. Uh, but we're going to find out. So anyway, that is a long Japan round number two. And I will see you guys back for Germany round number three. All right, Germany round three. So looking at the board, I've had remarkable dice so far in this game. Uh, only shitty outcome I had was my C-Zone's 37 counter, which should have left my fleet uh, ultimate vulnerable to be ultimately destroyed. But uh, he got shitty dice and it didn't happen, which allowed me to cap India round two. This Navy's ugly. And he's just adding to it. USA Navy is going to be a monster in maybe two turns. So, or maybe next turn. Um, I'm going to hope to take, so I did the math on this. If I attack Russia this turn, it's 47% chance to take, to win. If I wait a turn, it goes down, odds go down to like 28%. So I think I have to do it now. Um, I know it's kind of a, a far cry from from, uh, from the dice, but the only other problem I'm going to have is he's going to take Karelia back probably. So I will. I what I did was I bought um, an it, six infantry and artillery and two fighters. I'm going to stack France with nine infantry and two artillery. Hopefully I don't lose two. And then I'm going to put uh, six infantry and the artillery and one fighter in Germany. And I'm gonna try to mobilize a fighter and hopefully some of my air power survives. If, if Obviously if I get a ridiculously good result um, in, uh, in Russia, I'll have some extra fighters here and I won't move my infantry out of here. I may decide to move my infantry into West Russia, depending on how bad this attack goes. Um, I just don't know yet. So, but that's it. This game could be over pretty soon. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stack this. We're gonna take uh, one artillery and take the Caucasus. And then we're going to hit Russia. One tank is going to go through there so I can retreat there if I want. And the other six are going... The other six are going here and into Russia. So I can retreat to West Russia if I need to. Oh man, this is it. Okay. It's not a good it's not a good battle for me, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so we're gonna take it and see what happens. Implausible, it's still 47%. I did the math right. 15 units. And he has no anti-air. So that's what it's telling me. Alright. We're gonna try it.
Okay. Okay, so we took Russia. We took Russia, which is fantastic. Um, let's see, how many fighters does he have? One fighter. Uh, I'll leave the AA guns in there because I'll need them in, in Russia or in Germany. All right, so as long as I can hold the rest of this stuff, but I don't think I can because I've only got three guys here and he's going to take Karelia. He's going to be able to take Karelia for sure. But I should be able to mass produce uh, units now and regroup. So I should be pretty good as far as uh, getting rid of Russia. He can, he'll have a shot to take Russia back. In fact, I'm going to give up Karelia. And the only reason I say that is because if he takes Russia back, which he probably should, I'm going to want to be able to hit it with, you know, some units to try to recapture it again and leave him with nothing. Oh man, where should I put the, f oh man, I could put the fighters. I could put the fighters. Well, I'll put them both in Germany now, so they're not going to be able to go anywhere. They're not going to be able to attack uh, Russia, but that's okay. Let's see, one, two, three, four. No, I can't, even if I put them in Italy, they can't attack. So, all right, well, we took Russia which is the main thing. We'll just have to try to hold it. We'll give up Karelia for a turn. And then we'll just start mass producing infantry and uh, and land units and try to close them out, close, kick them out of here. Because this is just going to be an absolute monster. So I will probably try to maybe take Africa. Because I'm going to lose Karelia anyway, probably to England. Um, well, because I'm going to lose Karelia to England, uh, I'm probably going to just build a shit ton of Navy. I got to try to stop him from taking the Philippines, but I don't know. That could be a hellacious battle. So maybe I'll send all my entire fleet here. But I think he'll have enough to kill it. I really do. But we'll have to see. We will have to see. All right. Let me finish the non-com there. This, that's, that was a big decision. Um, uh, to move out of Karelia. I wonder how uh, he's going to see that. But let's go ahead and mobilize everything into Germany. Obviously, if we had some fighters left over here, I probably would have left the three infantry here to try to stave off England and America. But since he's going to um, he's gonna cap it anyway, I'll just start mass producing troops here and just push him out. This isn't going to, I mean, I should be able to capture Russia. I should be able to recap it. In fact, I sent, I'll send a tank with Japan. I'll send, I'll send the Japanese tank up here into Kazakh. And then maybe put an IC there and start just producing troops so I can take, take and hold Russia. I don't know. But um, you know what? It's uh, The dice have been in my favor all game. And so um, plus with 70 bucks to spend now, uh, I should be able to buy uh, enough units to start securing Europe. So that is going to do it for Germany round number three. And I will see you guys back for Japan round number three. All right, welcome back. So this is going to be the end of the game. Uh, my opponent, Sakun, decided to forfeit after I took Moscow, which I think was the right decision. And really, I mean, he could have battled back. I mean, certainly I left uh, uh, Karelia open. 
and uh, he could have battled back. But a couple of things that were really the turning points in this game. Um, he got he got diced severely in Ukraine in Russian round one, and he lost I think five Russian infantry taking West Russia, which is pretty atrocious. But even with those terrible shitty dice, um, he was still in a good position. I mean, obviously the game is over in three rounds, so I say that. Um, but he was he was in a good position. Had any of my attacks failed? As a matter of fact, after this attack. Uh, in season 36 what went so bad for him that was pretty much the turning point of the game uh, we both uh, agreed uh, we messaged after the game and uh, we agreed that this is probably the ultimate turning point in the game when when uh, he had such an atrocious attack in season 36 because it allowed me to cap India in round two he couldn't take it back and then Obviously, I had like a 49% shot to take Moscow. And I took it and it paid off. I had extraordinary dice all game long, except for obviously C-Zone 37, which should have uh, pretty much ended my Japanese fleet. But again, uh, then he got dice in his, uh, in his attacking of that. So... Uh, a couple things that we talked about. We talked about the tank rush. Uh, I don't generally do a tank rush, uh, but he's, he favors it uh, and basically said that he likes to do it uh, when Russia has a really crappy rush around one or a really good round one uh, because uh, it's very effective. And the other thing that really stood out uh, from for me in this game was basically when he looks at whether or not you attack, right? So a couple of times I took, I took pretty slight, um, like in India, I think it was a 66 percent, 66 or 67 uh, percent victory chance in India, and then Russia was like a 49 percent victory chance. Um, I took both of those battles because what he said was. If you're going to decide whether or not to attack, look at the attack and decide what your chances are going to be going forward if you don't attack. Right? So if I didn't do this Russia attack, was I going to be able to take Russia or win the game in the long run? The answer was no, probably. Because he had good position. USA had a, a tremendous position in the Pacific. Uh, Japan was going to be fighting for its life, especially if I had lost this fleet here. And if I allowed him to fortify Russia, I, was I don't know if I ever would have cracked it because I didn't have a lot of units coming in to reinforce um, you know, wave after wave to try to take Russia. So... Another thing uh, we talked about was the difference between a KJF and a KGF strategy. Obviously, uh, it's hard to do a, a tank rush in a KGF, kill Germany first defense, because you have to deal with all of the attacks on your west coast. So it's much, much easier to do it. In, in fact, uh, my opinion, you, you have to take Russia out as soon as possible if uh, your opponent is doing a KJF because, especially if they're good at it, like I'm playing against a platinum opponent here, so um, I can bet that his strategy is going to be good. I have to just have to rely on good dice and making as few mistakes as possible. And so, you know, worked out for me in this game, but certainly the game on multiple occasions could have gone one way or the other. It was a very interesting game for only being three rounds. That was a very, very interesting game. Oh yeah, the other mistake we talked about <clears throat> was just a mistake on on uh, on his part was leaving the German transport alive uh, in uh, the first round. So my, I made a mistake. I only took uh, the Caucasus with one unit. 
And he was able to recap it by sacrificing the bomber from United Kingdom. And so he recapped it, which then would have allowed this fighter that starts the game in Szechuan to take out the transport, because my battleship was in 17, and land in the Caucasus. And that one... Uh, but then he decided to attack uh, Quang Tung instead of doing it to take the transport out. And because of that, uh, that improved the odds on the Caucasus uh, tremendously. So uh, the Caucasus battle, I think, was another maybe two-thirds, 66%, something like that. Um I'd have to go back and look, but it was significantly better because I was able to bring the transport um, to attack here. So, <clears throat> and which also allowed the bombardment from the battleship. So that was another thing. And, you know, one of the early decisions I made was to land my fighter that was attacking over here. I landed the fighter in Thailand and rather than in Quang Tung, which probably worked out in my favor because without the fighter here uh he went for this attack when probably if i had the japanese fighter here he probably would have um not done this attack and then he would have probably turned his eyes over towards the transport uh i don't know if he intended to take quang tung no matter what but certainly would have been a tougher battle and so may or may not have taken that but that actually worked in my favor because he didn't take the transport out so again very interesting game a lot of turning points uh, i played super aggressive and you know obviously if the dice were my favor if they don't we have an entirely different outcome but uh my hat's off to second i appreciate the game that will be the end of this game and the end of this video so i appreciate you guys watching and i will see you back for another video